welcome to the Harbour Tech Academy. Today we're going to look at um, conflict management. It's just one of those skills that you need for life, not just for work, not just for hospitality. So let's get into it. So in this lesson, we're going to have a look at the difference between what is assertive, passive and aggressive. Um, we're going to look at the causes of conflict and how they happen. And then we're going to go through a very important uh, conflict resolution process. So assertive communication carries respects and feelings um, and the needs for everyone and is always um, very confident. So we're actually going to look at verbal and non-verbal. So firm and relaxed voice like I have now, um, fluent and sincere, uh, appropriate um, volume for the situation, and always cooperative and constructive and trying to work through the problem. A non-verbal is direct eye contact the whole time, open body stance, um, smiling when pleased. If you tell me something I'm not happy about, I'm going to frown. Have you ever seen an aggressive person before? It lacks the respect for others. It's, it's very forceful and it, there is no compromise. So let's have a look at verbal. It's sarcastic, it's condescending, it's blaming, it's your fault, um, boasting, and I'm always putting you down. Nonverbal, it's aggressive. I'm intruding in your personal space, I'm right up. I'm fist clenching, cross arms, scowling, and I don't really care about you. Um, passive communication. I'm not putting my needs, I put them below yours because I don't want to conflict. And I, I'm pretty much, I'm going to allow everyone to make the decision for me. Uh, verbal, I'm hesitant, I'm self dismal. I'm not feeling, I'm putting myself down. I, I'm just, I'm not, I'm just not good. And nonverbal, I, I want to look at you. You know, I, I'm slouched, um, you know, I, I don't know, I just don't know. I, I'm feeling a bit uncomfortable in this situation. Well, I was never good at drama, but there's the three uh, different ways of doing. So hopefully um, a little bit of performance made that better for you. Now we're going to look at causes of conflict. Um, you know, change is one of the biggest ones. People don't generally like change in a workplace. Um, there's relationships between workmates, um, poor communication lines that suddenly um, can happen if you're upper management or you're lower management or in between and not communicating. Um, poor um, performance of someone else can definitely um, be a cause. Um, harassment, and this is different, that aggressive harassment. Um, and limited resources, and resources just isn't what you buy. It's actually the time that could be the problem. All right, let's talk about the conflict resolution process. Um, just give you a scenario that um, you probably would have seen is a, a, a waiter comes through a table and there's a very unhappy customer and something's built up. So let's use this process. The first thing is we are going to listen. It's really important that we actively listen so we get rid of anything else that we're doing and we actually listen. Do not interrupt the customer, just let them get it out. That's the first step. The second is actually acknowledging um, the customer's complaint. It might be that a meal is not to their liking and say, look, I'm very sorry, sir. Take the meal away straight away. And we don't go, oh, well, the chef was just not doing well, don't attribute blame. Step three is to establish the problem. Now that you've listened and you've acknowledged, you're actually going to ask back the questions, sort of factual questions, to get to the bottom of what the customer is unhappy about, um, paraphrasing what they've already said to sort of get to the point of what is the problem. If you rush through this stage, you might not um, understand the problem that the customer is having. Step four, you need to confirm and agree on an, an acceptable solution. Now in a restaurant, um, it's not always about giving the whole meal free, it might be parts of it. And it's really important that you can, anything that you say you can do, you must be able to do it. So if you're 
um, a supervisor is there and you know they can do it, then you hand that up to the supervisor. So many complaints in um, restaurants and hotels, um, no one takes action. Someone says, well, it's not, not my responsibility. It's very important if you actually have that conflict resolution that you actually have to take the lead if you've, um, you, you started with that. You need to record. So um, most places have a way, it might be a complaint logbook, it might be a program, it might be a um, process or procedure in, but you need to record that that's there. And then the follow up is so very important to ensure customer satisfaction. And we can actually turn situations around from a customer being really angry about something to being a very loyal customer and coming back and telling other people. And that's a win-win and that's what we're after. Wow, what a mix. Looking at the um, assertive, aggressive and passive. Remember the, the um, conflict resolution you can actually turn customers from being really angry through to actually being um, very, very loyal customers. It's also good in relationships and um, at, at family and um, girlfriends, boyfriends, friends. It really makes a difference. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we were going to do some more conflict resolution uh, scenarios in class. Thanks for watching. See you next time.